This Jesus who taught us to pray also said, Seek first the kingdom of God, and the rest will be credited to you as righteousness. Good. You found me. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I am always contending for the faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. And today, ah, hell, why not? Let's use the elephant that is the room behind me to discuss prayer. I know it's a stretch, but stick around. I want to start by telling you a story. It's a story about my children. And I Maybe you're the parent in this story, maybe you're not a parent yet, and so you're the child in this story. But I will often tell my children that there are things that I'm going to do. Um, when we get home, you can have a snack, or um, we're going to watch a movie tonight, or um, I want you to help me with this. Um, and my children are not afraid to come up to me and say, Hey, Daddy, remember, remember when you said, remember when you said I could have a snack? Remember when you said we were going to watch a movie? Um, remember when you said I needed to help you with something? Do you remember? They look at me with those big brown eyes and my heart just melts every time. Now think about this. You're a child. And you go up to your parents and you say, you know what, Dad? I'm telling you. This is what we're doing. I'm telling you I get a snack. I'm telling you. We're going to play at the park. I'm telling you, we're going to watch a movie. I, I declare it. We're doing it, Dad. How's that going to go for you? <clears throat> and this is the difference between Christian prayer and name it and claim it prayer. Now, what does this have to do with... <laughs> Look, it's as plain as the huge Italian nose on my face, all right? So what does prayer have to do with the new surroundings? Well, it's not like it was difficult to find. It's not like I didn't have ample time to move. But long story short, everything that could have gone wrong logistically, in spite of all the help that I had to make it happen, did actually go wrong. And we're not talking about we came right up to the wire. We're talking we passed the wire. We passed. Have to be out by this date. And nowhere to go. It, it was a logistical nightmare. And it got me thinking about how I was praying about it. Because when my pastor and I were talking about it, he asked me, are you praying? Of course I'm praying. How are you praying? Well, I'm just being honest with God about who I am. You know, how I fall short and how I don't deserve any of the things that I'm asking for. But I'm also kind of reminding God of who he is. You know, when I pray, I, I say, be gracious and merciful to me. Gracious, give me the good things that I don't deserve. Merciful, don't give me the evil things I do deserve. All of this centers on me being a sinner and him being a holy God. So I'm confessing before God who he is and who I am. Much like the way the Lord's Prayer starts, huh? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Then we get to our petitions. Always, who is God first? And the pastor said, you know, I think it's okay that God, I, I think God loves it when we remind him of his promises. I think it delights God to hear us say, I'm asking for this because you sent your son to die for me. I'm asking for this because you have in Jesus forgiven my sins. I'm coming to you in prayer because you and baptism have given me your own name to call upon Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I know your name now. You want me to use it. But it's not this magical spell that evangelicals like to use when they, I declare, I decree, God's going to do this. and That's a naughty child that's never going to get what they want, regardless of what the promise was of the parent. Because anger is just going to well up. 
But when you go to God, whatever it is that you need, and just say, well, let's use my prayer, for example. God, I don't deserve anything that I'm about to ask because I'm a sinner. Particularly, spare you the details, but I also know that you sent your son for me, that he bore the condemnation of my sin in his flesh on the cross, that he died my eternal death, that he rose again from the dead, and that he lives and reigns for me. Because of who Jesus is, I'm asking you, or insert all the details and all the things that had to go right because they were past the last minute. I'm asking you to be gracious to me and merciful. Not because I deserve it, because I don't, but because of who you are, who Jesus is for me. On account of that, please hear the petitions of my heart. Please give me what I am asking for. This isn't a magic formula. This isn't the cracking the code of prayer. There is no code, but there's an attitude with which we go to God. Bold? Yes. It takes boldness to remind him of his promises, to say, you know, I'm going to be without a lot here in a second, God. You promise that you feed the birds and they don't worry. You promise that you clothe the lilies of the field and they just get cut down and thrown into the fire anyways, but you do it. And then you tell me not to worry about what I'm going to eat or drink or what I'm going to wear, or in this case, where I'm going to live. Bring me that peace to not worry. Help me to trust you. That old biblical prayer, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So whatever it is you're going through, just remember God's promises. Remind him of those promises like a dear child speaks to their dear father. And there are times when my children will come to me and say, Daddy, you said, and I'll say, I know I said, but not right now. I'll acknowledge the promise, but not right now. That's a reality. So this Jesus who taught us to pray also said, seek first the kingdom of God. and The rest will be credited to you as righteousness. If we're seeking first the kingdom of God nine times out of ten, the things we're asking for, we probably shouldn't anyways. But we ask for them because we're human, because God tells us to come to him for anything. Don't be afraid to be bold in your prayers, but boldness in prayer is not naming and claiming. Boldness is reminding God of who he is. It's all dependent on who he is for you. And the good news is, is that he's a God who did not spare his own son, but sent him to die and rise again for you. That's the God we pray to. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and the mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.